Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Trash Rats podcast. I am one of the hosts, Rusty Cage, joined as always by Mumkey Jones, a.k.a. Simeon Jimmy and Reactor. Uh, we have some special guests today. Uh, as a reoccurring member, Emperor Lemon has joined us and very special guest, Meat Canyon, has decided to join our podcast for some reason. How are you doing, Meat Canyon? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it, guys. And so I can, I can call you Meat? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Meat. Can I call you Canyon then to make up for it? Yeah, we can have a fun variation, and I'll just try to keep track. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, I, I think that you are the, at this point, you're the largest YouTube creator that has uh, been on the podcast so far. You oh, have, like, what, uh, 1.8 million subscribers now? Yeah, nice. yeah some around there, yeah. And so uh, your, your channel is mainly based around animations, like really creepy uh, cartoons. Is that what you do mainly? Yeah, I mean, like, there, just kind of, like, it? anything fucked up around, like, childhood cartoons to skew them in a weird way. Um, and then, of course, with, like, recent stuff, I've been trying to maybe even... I've been working on like an original series, so just trying to branch out, but definitely that's just kind of the the whole realm I like to stay in is just kind of fucked. <laughs> I don't know, fucked, <laughs> yeah, fucked creations, yeah. I guess, is the whole deal. Yeah. So you have a Kickstarter, right, for um, you're, you're doing like an animated show or something? Yeah, we had a uh, we had a successful Kickstarter campaign, luckily, for this series called Monster Lab that I'm doing, and uh, the first episode comes out January 3rd. Hell yeah. Nice. Are you going to try to pitch that to a TV show? No. Or fuck, like, fuck a, no, like a no, network? Uh -uh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't want to deal with networks or anything. I I worked in L.A. a little bit um, in like 2017 uh, working around networks and studios and stuff, and it's just like such a fucking hassle. Like the, the obstacle of even just pitching a show and then like, you know, t two years f after you sign the contract, which may take a year to sign the contract, then you have to wait like two years until they're like, yeah, we'll, we'll put it up on our app or, you know, network and hopefully people will resonate with it and then we can pr like approve it for a full season. It's just well, like I remember a, almost like eight years ago now, there's uh, Chris O'Neill and Psychic Pebbles. They were working on Hellbenders and that was right. supposed to go on Adult Swim. And I don't know the full story behind that, but apparently that got put in like major development hell and mm. it ultimately never ended up on the air. Yeah. I mean, it's a... Uh, it's seriously a tale that's happened so much. I mean, like even people that have like established careers in the industry, like JG Quintel, after a regular show was done, he made like an entire season of the show. I forgot what I think it's called, like Out There or something. I think it's a, either Hulu or Netflix. But because of like all of the competition with streaming services, they like didn't put it out for until I think this year, which was two years later than he made it. And it's like, it's just, I, I, I really just hate being at the burden <laughs> of, like, other people who are yeah. just like, oh, you know, we have to do all these different things for business <clears> reasons. <throat> when it's like, if I have the viewers, like, why don't I just put it up on my channel for free and then people can I, th do whatever they I want. I feel like there's something about, like, um, you know, having your show on Adult Swim or on Netflix or Hulu that makes it feel like you've made it. Oh, yeah. Uh, or or yeah. it seems like it has a prestige. It's even like though a validation. It no matter yeah. how yeah, bad yeah. the show is. Yeah, I think that even as a kid, when you, like, watch TV or, you like, you would watch, like, Aqua Teen or some shit at, like, four in the morning and you're like, oh, what I wouldn't do to have, like, my own cartoon series or something. I think that that dream is still there for sure. I just think, like, right now, I feel like I would only want to pursue that if I, like, had some kind of, like, veteran producer person who could, like, hold a fucking lantern through the darkness and, like, guide me yeah, through. Yeah, right, Because right. I, I don't uh, want the to. The role of television it. now is not exactly essential towards success in animation right yeah. exactly so it's just the game has changed a little bit and uh i think definitely everything will be on streaming before too long and we'll see how that affects sh uh shit but yeah i don't know wait what do you what do you mean everything will be on streaming like um i feel like uh, everything i feel like even like news and also even like public broadcast stuff i think that we're all going to find here before too long i mean not, not here before too, like it's not going to be like a couple of years but i think that like literally everything like cable television will cease to exist and I think we will 100% be just streaming everything. Oh man, it, it still surprises me to this day that cable television exists. I, like I, I have about 20 channels that come through. It's absolute fucking trash. It's just garbage. It's what makes it uh, golden and, though too, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, for <laughs> sure. Like, I, I, I love was, it. 
I, I, I like having TV because uh, you don't really have an option of mm-hmm. what you're going to watch. You just have to pick between like the best of 15 shows. Oh, it's the, I love yeah. it, man. My dad would always sit there and my dad still has cable television, but it's like one of those things like the deal you get from Dollar General that's like nine channels or something that gives you all the local stuff. And, right, and right, he, uh, right. It's always like between like Steve Wilco and like <laughs> some like black and white like tre- treasure of the Sierra Madre or some shit. And you're just like, well, pick your poison type deal. Mm-hmm. Cause, uh, hey, Steve Wilco's th- that is top tier television. I'll that watch is. Jerry Springer, Maury, <laughs> Steve Wilco's. That's a great three hour block of TV. <laughs> I feel is, like there's nothing good. left to watch on uh, streaming anymore. It all seems like crap. Or they just have well, horrible algorithms to serve me. way too many streaming services. Yeah, that's true. I think that there's too much, and I think you have too much free will. Like, that's like kind of the yeah. thing with like uh-huh. TV is like you are forced to <laughs> like it's like this mm-hmm. is your time block and this is your your choices. Like now yeah. it's just there's just too much. Like I feel I get overwhelmed with how much shit there is. You know what I mean? Uh, no, I absolutely. You, you start watching a show on Netflix and you go like five minutes in if it doesn't have your absolute. 100% approval you're like ah, I'm just gonna watch something else mm-hmm. but yeah, that's TV, why I stopped watch. watching Rusty Cage videos I just as I got there's only so much time and these are kind of boring <laughs> I've yeah, also stopped watching so Rusty yeah. Cage videos but not for that reason <laughs> what's your reason uh, I don't know something to do usually with just lying to the audience about <laughs> certain no. sobriety challenges <laughs> comes off to me as really dishonest can't really support Listen. that content you know I agree. Listen, me, I I was sober. Uh, Emp is mad because I I smoked cigarettes. He saw me smoking a cigarette, <laughs> and so he says that that breaks my sobriety. Oh, so was this supposed to be like a uh, like just complete completely clean? Is that was is that what the rules? That's were? how he advertised it, and then three <laughs> days in, I think he changed his mind. He was still, I don't think was, I ever advertised it like I wasn't gonna I was gonna be pure mm, of fucking. Weren't you still doing caffeine? In temple. It's in a clip. I can definitely send it to you. Uh, okay, nobody cares about Rusty's stupid yeah, series. Yeah, yeah. We're here to talk about actual <laughs> entertaining content from Mr. Meat Canyon here. Okay. Well, I, I, so Meat Canyon, I, I will say, I, I, will say I, did, I did watch all of it, Rusty. I thought it was very well done. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm glad that, that there's someone on the show that finally supports me. <laughs> yeah, it's I'll about time. <laughs> yeah. All right. But um, – so, Me Canyon, your stuff is very interesting to me. I remember the first thing I saw from you was the uh, Ed, Ed, and Eddie Jawbreaker video. Oh, yeah. And it immediately stood out to me from, like, other online animation. I think because of both the sound design and the animation itself, where a, a lot of animation I see online from kind of just amateur Newgrounds-type animators, they focus a lot on... I guess sort of movement and they try to keep very simple character designs. Mm. So it's easier to like animate the face and lip sync, Mm. but you kind of do like the opposite approach where you have very detailed facial expressions and focus mostly on just sort of the lip syncing Mm. and the facial animation. I always found that pretty interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely um, intentional. I think that like in terms of even economic animation, I know that like a lot of those old animators and stuff, you know, those guys did frame by frame. I mean, it just takes so long. Like, animation in any regards takes a long time, but I think that the real equation that I had to ask was, like, how can you do that? Like, how can an animator survive and not be, like, just a story time animator? And I think, like, just using, like, puppeted rigs and taking a lot of inspiration from, like, Metalocalypse or Aqua Teen Hunger Force, where it is, you, you're drawn to people's face when they talk, even if they're animated. You will be looking at... They might do subtle gestures and stuff, but you are focused on their face and like whenever like kind of just you know human interaction type bullshit but definitely and then you know just taking inspiration from all sorts of shit like spawn and i like folds and wrinkles and bumps and that kind of shit so it was always you know it just felt kind of natural to do the, both of those and then also uh just a love for horror films and like existential <laughs> uh monologues and stuff that's just kind of my jazz so um just combining yeah, you, it all you, felt natural you made yeah, you made that um like the Dragon Ball Z uh, uh Bulma and, and Goku video where I mm. like what was that face mapping? It was yeah. it was very strange to watch. Yeah, it was uh basically like a digital illustration, then I used like this terrible iPhone app and then we uh <laughs> it was just motion tracking. Yeah. <laughs> but it was like how how to like make it more unsettling. I certainly try to find different ways to like 
splice it up, you know, because I, I try to upload quite a bit too. So it's like, how do you keep things fresh and not just have people? Because I know people in the comments all the time are always like, oh, it's the same bullshit over and over again. So it's like, how do you even oh, justify to yourself that it's, oh, you know, God. different? You can't read the off. comments. You that know, I, I it, it feels bad. I, with, I, I love reading them um, for creepy shit because people will theorize about anything, like, especially that jawbreaker thing. Like, that was crazy seeing all, like, the people theorize and talk in the comments, and it was cool. But, yeah, I don't know. I still can't break away from it. I feel like it's maybe just because I'm still so new to the whole shebang, but... Yeah, yeah. Your your channels. Uh, you were saying that it, it blown up relatively frequently, or not uh, uh, recently. Mm. Um, and I like I've seen your videos, and I'm not sure if it's because it was recommended to me. I'm not really sure. Like I saw the Willy Wonka one, mm. and I'm not sure if it's like uh, did the algorithm just like uh, uh, match up with your content now? Because I know being an animator on YouTube has got to be very frustrating. Yeah, um, but, um, yeah, <laughs> it can be. Yeah, your your channel blew up recently. Yeah, like uh, last year around August, I had seven hundred subscribers, and then luckily one hmm. of my tunes Holy did shit. really well on Reddit. And then from there, uh, every person I you know, and I know a couple people, like even some story time animator stuff, and uh, they always said that their biggest you know regret was whenever they kind of had a video that hit that they kind of like that they didn't produce another one in a good right. in a time good ma manner. And my whole mm -hmm. deal is, you know, I'm just, I'm going to keep hitting a, you know, the kind of quota that I hit for myself and just keep going. And luckily it's done very well. And I feel like that's just kind of, you have to feed the beast type deal to mm -hmm. like get pushed. Yeah, when, no, they forget yeah who you are. when you have the opportunity, grow it as big as you can. Cause it's, I mean, with all these things, uh, you don't want to end up like, you know, like someone like me where <laughs> you're just a, a has been. <laughs> well, that's something <laughs> I found pretty remarkable. Meat Canyon is your output because I remember right. being subscribed to guys like Harry Partridge Oni, Ego Raptor back in the day. And maybe like at their peak output, they put out like one video a month. Mm. But I, well, like I see Harry Partridge puts out a video like once every three, four years. Right. So I, I always assume that like any sort of animation at this scale where you don't have like a team of animators will always be just so time consuming. So I, I've been just very impressed watching just the output at which you can make these animations and do it co consistently. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, and it, it's all very, I mean, m m I feel like my stuff is very catered to the YouTube. Like, the, once again, those guys, like, Harry Partridge is, like, such an incredible fucking animator. Like, it's insane. Like, uh, his frame-by-frame -frame stuff, and it's just, it, it, right. it's, it's so time-consuming, and it's so clean. But I feel like my objective isn't necessarily just to make the most beautiful piece of, like, animation as much as it is to tell, like, a fucked-up, funny joke or something, and to kind of keep it shit posty and to keep it kind of like just fun in that regard like something that you know is going to be that's going to pop up on my channel like every two weeks so we that's like kind of the m mindset i've tried to strive for that um and a lot of those guys you know were very focused on the quality of animation and like the the art style itself or the the art of animation itself which is of course incredibly respectful but it just unfortunately doesn't cater to youtube's algorithm yeah, I, I talk to a lot of uh, animators, and I mean, that's always the hardest thing is being able to put out a video, a new animation, it just it, it, like even once every two months, and then you lose the traction that, mm. you know, the algorithm uh, favors. Uh, did you ha just have an infrastructure in place from working in, uh, would you say you worked in L.A.? Before, like, <laughs> like whenever this video hit, whenever your channel started mm. blowing up, did you just already know what to do, or are you still trying to figure it out? You know, I feel like I'm maybe still trying to figure it out even. Like, I know I'm doing well. I definitely can't say that, you know, I'm, I'm hurting by any means. But I think that just a big thing was just being a fan of all those old guys. And whenever, like, what was it, 2014? Or I'm trying to think of what year, 2014 or 2015, when that change happened. Um, it was 2012. Was it 2012? God damn. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Long time what change? Holy fuck. What change? That was, so the, just yeah. for context, uh, the old YouTube algorithm pre-2012, it used to just be recommend videos based on view count oh, yeah, alone, yeah. basically. So if your video got a lot of views, it'll get recommended more, and it's sort of the snowball effect. But then um, in October of 2012, YouTube changed their entire core structure mm -hmm. of how the recommendation algorithm works, where now watch time was the most important metric. Sure? And this basically just yeah. killed off YouTube animation because you had these guys spending like a month 
to make a three minute video. And even if it gets like a million views, it's just three minutes of watch time per person. But then you have like guys like PewDiePie and Markiplier, they can upload a 20 minute let's play every day. And that ultimately killed off animators and led to the rise of just let's plays and long, long drawn out content on YouTube. And it was a lot of, uh, you know, and the big change for that, the difference was people clickbaiting and like that completely killed that whole metric was because oh, yeah. of people clickbaiting videos and that became the whole, you know, and that's what fucked over people. Like it, it was just like people being like, I think that was like the era of like, you know. The Reply Girls? Yeah, <laughs> I think Reply Girls are even like, uh, like I bought a homeless man this or that or whatever. It's just like all of the thumbnail, like clickbait bullshit. Like that's all it that's was. The right. That's the official reason YouTube cited. But if you ask me, they did it because they went into just like a big viewer retention or a user retention battle yeah. with Facebook and mm. other sites. Maximize and profits. Oh. The, mm. the prime directive, I think, with that is to just keep people on YouTube and don't have YouTube be a site where just people check in to see one thing and then log off. Yeah, it probably helps sell ads way better when they can prove that people are like our viewers are on the site for, you know, three hours a day or something. Right. Yeah, it sucks because that's really the nature of uh, every website is just going that route. It's not about the quality of the content or it, it, like, you know, they don't even want to feed subscribers uh, or followers the content that they're following because they, they, it's always about recommending them just what makes money, whether it, you know, fits their needs or not. Um, I mean, so you, you make very, I guess, creepy and seems like borderline um animations that like do you ever feel like you're you're making any animation that kind of crosses youtube's tos <laughs> uh, every time I, I try to strive for that every time <laughs> yeah i think that like um it's definitely a thing i think it's one of those like i don't know the exact quoting or whatever but whenever it's like if you feel like it's wrong to make or something then usually you're on the right path if you feel uncomfortable making it um usually that means you're you know, in doing doing something right because you're trying new things, you're pushing boundaries. But um, yeah, I mean, all the time. I mean, like even today, like Miss Frizzle. I I really, I honestly thought the video would get blocked because I mean, you see the inside of Miss Frizzle's pussy basically, and there's like the <laughs> yeah. outline of like the gate and stuff, and it isn't so blatantly that, but still, it's like um, I don't know. Like you just never know. Or even like the Willy Wonka one, I really thought was going to get removed because of the whole Epstein stuff going on, but. Um, yeah, I don't oh, know. Oh yeah, yeah. Like yeah, you never you never know if like what you're going to be doing is I mean, the the terms of service are so uh vague. It's just if something is sensational, I believe, shocking or sensational content's not allowed. Like what the fuck does that even mean? Well, yeah. just last month I had a video review of the of the thing, the horror movie 1982 film The Thing. Right. It got it got taken down off my channel completely and <laughs> so eventually stupid. it was reinstated, but to even have that just, problem though, it's, it's just obnoxious. Like, it's tough to think that there's so much stuff you have to think about where whether it's the automated system or people manually reviewing and flagging it that YouTube can just nix your video just like that. Oh yeah. It's yeah. chaos. It is. And I think that like you I feel like half the time you have to have I feel like I'm I have like a guardian angel <laughs> over that deal cuz sometimes my shit gets on trending and stuff and I'm like I don't know how the fuck that oh, happened shit. and and everything <laughs> and put it there. Uh, doesn't? So the I last I, honest YouTuber on trending. Yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, I don't know. I it, it's very odd. I mean, I know I had the whole copyright thing with uh Warner Brothers and stuff and it, it does feel like right now What was that what was that about? Uh I had a video called Wabbit Season uh which was doing very well um and Warner Brothers copyright claimed it as uh as if I uploaded an episode of like oh of God. Looney Tunes from 2014. And I, like, appealed it. At the time, I didn't really know that I should have, like, had a lawyer look over it because I didn't know the severity of that shit. But because I was like, oh, this is a simple misunderstanding, blah, blah, blah. And I appealed it. But then, like, it, I think it was, like, a three hours later, they just sided with Warner Brothers. And, um, hmm. yeah. What, was that justified? Like, uh, I mean, did, did you – I guess you're using their intellectual property. You know, it, I think it falls under fair use. And I think the whole thing, too, is, like, I mean, I, I – I don't think that any of the characters besides Elmer Fudd looked like the original. Like, I, I, I made Bugs look all fucked, and, I mean, every piece of that 
animation. Yeah, yeah it's clearly it, a parody. I mean, it's yeah, not like robot it should, chicken. It should fall under fair it. use. I mean, like, and the th- that's, that's the thing. It's like I make though. sure that we never like trace any backgrounds or we don't. We try not to do any of that stuff, and everything is original. And like, it can take heavy influence if it needs to like sell. Like, if if you need to put the viewer in like that space of feeling like, oh, this is the show, so you can z- subvert them later. But I mean, everything is always like we make it ourselves, and uh, I, I honestly think it was just because I think Warner Brothers was doing a mass unfl- like mass flagging thing since uh, I think they partnered with HBO Max, and HBO Max was getting ready to release, and they a big thing they were pushing was the Looney Tunes. Oh yeah, they were like releasing. That's probably what it has to do. I remember so. a bunch of videos of mine because I used to do like YouTube poops of like SpongeBob, and mm. when the second SpongeBob movie was about to come out, a bunch of people got their SpongeBob YouTube yeah. poops taken down. So I think that's a common trait in media nowadays where if like the big dogs are reviewing or renewing an IP, they just scour YouTube and do a bunch of manual takedowns beforehand. Yeah. And lucky that's like really the only big one that I can think of that I've had. But honestly, it was like, it feels like more of a blessing than anything to my channel. Um, just because I feel like it created such a meme amongst the people and, I think that I responded to it in a good light to where I think people appreciated that. Um, and I had like a funeral for him. I don't know if you guys even know the context of all this. I, I don't want to just sp- uh, sit here and I, spew I'll about it. I'll be honest. It. I'm not really sure. But Well, the whole um, thing is I, just I, that the, the Bugs Bunny thing, the whole cartoon was just like Bugs is like this struggling rapist. And he's like going <laughs> to rape Elmer Fudd. I remember he had nipples. Yeah, he has nipples and big belly button thing. But the whole thing was like the struggle of like Knowing your child is this monster. I remember I was like watching like a bunch of De- Jeffrey Dahmer documentaries. I think at the time, and it made me think of this video idea. And whenever they took it down, I just responded with like a funeral with all my other characters there. And then basically the whole thing was like the characters being like, "Well, I guess it, it's like canon now that Bugs Bunny is rapist. If it's like, <laughs> it's like legal property." And I feel like that was like such a beneficial thing instead of like going on there and being like, "Ooh, you should have taken yeah, down yeah, just making my video. A video." Yeah, so. That everyone's already seen that, you know, all their everyone's made a video like that before. Or yeah, I know you took I it have. and turned it into something like unique and interesting. That yeah, could be I mean, and, and, see, and, and, and that's the thing though, too, Rusty is like I've seen people do that, and I just feel like it just never helps. Like it, it, it like never helps. And like I know YouTube's not going to change anything, so if anything, why not try to make like a joke out of it and just like move on? Right. Yeah. Just yeah. just keep rolling with it. Right. YouTube's not going to be watching. Like yeah, they don't give the a problem fuck. with YouTube and go. Oh shit, man, we really did fuck up. Yeah. And this oh. person just called out all of our flaws. <laughs> yeah, to exactly. be fair, on the thing video, I did release a video complaining afterwards, and they actually reinstated it. Where the, initially they brought it back with age restriction, but it's not consistent with any other ruling because there's a bunch of reviews of the thing on YouTube and they're not age restricted. I so, mean, do you think that maybe you have uh, like uh, both of you Emp and uh, Meat Canyon, like, mm-hmm. do you have like a person in YouTube who's like working there who just enjoys your content? I mean, I if know. you're on trending, it seems like, isn't that all manually picked? I know there are people on YouTube who really dislike me, <laughs> but it, 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 it's hard to say. Sometimes I just pray. How do you know there are people who dislike you at YouTube? Uh, Because in 2017, I did Tank the Rewind. Okay. You think that they actually noticed that shit and cared? Well, I've gotten tips from people who said that they talked. There's this one guy I talked to who said he, like, talked to their YouTube rep. And And he was talking shit about you? It it came up. Yeah. Oh, wow. (laughs) So and shy. now YouTube Rewind is canceled, so I guess I won in the end. Yeah, you won. But they can still fuck with me at any time, and I suspect it's because of that. But I don't even—I I have no idea. So do you I think they'll? Do you think they'll ever do YouTube Rewind again, or do you think this is them just being like, "Oh, with the coronavirus, we can be like, oh, well, there's a virus this year, so no big deal." And then next year they're going to be like, eh, we'll just keep the trend going." <laughs> no. I, how much up. money do you think they spend on YouTube Rewind? Way I too much. Would. Fucking imagine, dude. I can they, only imagine. They're going to come back with it, and they're going to think that it's like, "Oh, people have really been missing YouTube Rewind." <laughs> Uh, yeah, and it's going to be fl- absolute garbage again. If they looked at that fucking Twitter, the only people that were like, you guys take five minutes off was like Lele Pons and shit on like Twitter. And you're <laughs> like, <laughs> just, other YouTube than that, Golden everybody Boys. else was like, thank God. Like, bury it, dude. Jesus. Well, they they already didn't do a production last year. They just did a list video. Yeah, like a with fucking like stats mojo list, yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, shit, you're right. Yeah, I guess that's not really a good trend. Uh, it's definitely uh, headed straight towards just 
nixing it, but they're going to have to replace it with something. I mean, it just seems like it's good PR in general. To I was I don't know like about that. Sort of, I, yeah, because 2018 <laughs> broke the record for the yeah. most hated video on YouTube. See, I was talking, statistically speaking, the most dislikes with, oh. on any YouTube video. I was talking. I don't with, know uh, if it's good PR anymore. <laughs> I was talking with some people, and I figured that they might do like an Oscars thing, where they make their own like award ceremony, and it becomes like a suit and tie event. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah that's right. why. That, that's well, where I thought that they would. <laughs> that's where I thought they would move. Like, yeah. It, well, isn't that like what the Webbies are? Isn't that what is it's that called? just the oh, I have no idea. I know the shorties or are shorties or the fuck it is. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. So I mean, I know people are winning these awards like. But I have no idea what the fuck it is. Um, you, when uh, oh shit, well, I was gonna ask you something about. So, oh yeah, when we were talking about like uh, having someone that is on the inside who likes your content. I mean, it seems like it'd be very <clears throat> beneficial. But you say you've been on trending a few times. Like, do you think that you say you have a guardian angel, or you think you do? Yeah. I mean, it seems like people general genuinely do like your content and probably would appreciate it even if they were working at YouTube and thought that it might somehow cross their TOS. Um, and something you were saying before about how when you think you're crossing the line, mm. that's how you know you're kind of going in the right direction. Mm. And I, I feel like a lot of people want to do that, but then they kind of get pimped a little bit. Like uh, it, either it works great mm. and they blow up or it like causes their channel to be like shadow banned or some shit. And then they end up like a uh, uh, monkey Jones having to, you know, recreate a, a channel under a different pseudonym to avoid being detected. Right. By, like, I don't know, YouTube coming down on them. And I, I'm, um, I remember that was like kind of the main reason I found monkey. Was, was that just because of the, uh, what was the thing you reviewed or you did? Like, what was the deal you did? Uh, I made a video just explaining why I think my ban was wrong. Is that the one you're talking about? Or I guess the initial video you did, which got you banned, because it was like the... Uh, oh, it was just... The Elliot Roger stuff. Yeah, yeah I just, all my little Elliot documentaries Roger. are made about Elliot Roger. Oh, okay. I thought it was something else. Okay. Hmm. And that, that, seems, that seems odd. That's what that it was, officially get. speaking. No, it was weird because uh, hmm. it, uh, a lot of the videos that you got, like, they essentially just attacked Monkey's channel and gave him, like, three strikes. What was it, like, three strikes and... Yeah, they, just they were just putting, on arbitrary videos. They were putting strikes on videos that had been manually reviewed to be monetized, so I think they just hated me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know. I, I guess hmm. that whole concept terrifies me a little bit. It's like, because I, you know... I want to make videos that are uh, push that line, mm. but I feel like they just get snubbed. I think cartoons might get away with more. Yeah, True. I mean, I, I was gonna say I think that there's it's kind of like I feel like there's like some kind of rule. <laughs> maybe if it's like not there, like I know like uh, music videos get the whole exempt from like nudity and all sorts of other shit. Um, yeah, violence. Yeah. People and can like, hang them. So you can hang a child. Because like a, WMG a and all those guys have huge connections and pay off YouTube big you can, amounts of money. Mm. You can make a cartoon uh, smashing someone's head open with a hammer, but if you do a live action version, you get in trouble. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, and I, I think, think YouTube that, like, just automatically labels certain cartoons as kids content now. <laughs> now that the whole Copa thing has happened, they've had to completely reformat the site. I watch videos with, of uh, The Simpsons and King of the Hill sometimes, and they get automatically labeled as children's content. <laughs> so maybe yeah, there's certain exemptions with animation just in the automated sense. Yeah, I mean, I, I, maybe. I think that, like, I, I totally think that that's probably true. And I think that uh, maybe, like, the algorithm or the bots they have don't register the drawings, maybe, versus, like, live action stuff maybe I'm, I'm not entirely sure i was a big fan uh, it was probably about four years ago when there were a ton of children's cartoons that were being like uh they're like three hours long it was just something that you would set your three-year-old in front of an ipad or a computer and let them watch and it was like kids songs but then about an hour into the video it would be something like daredevil would come out and uh, and cut Mickey Mouse's head off or something, or like everyone would just be in this horribly tormented situation, and the parents wouldn't notice because they're not watching, and it was just perfect, like perfectly, just in the middle of this massive uh, kids songs, 
And I, I feel like that caused a, I'm not really sure what that caused, but it, it definitely like they, they removed all these, all this content at this point. You can't even find it on the internet. But yeah, a bunch of like mommy bloggers and stuff made videos being like, how damn my kid wants <laughs> it. It's not my fault as a parent for just not actually parenting my kid and parking them in front of an iPad for seven hours a day. It's yeah, YouTube's fault got for vlog. not moderating this completely ocean of content that's impossible to actually be monitored on a human scale. Have any of your videos popped up? Like, do you know of anyone complaining about that? Like kids seeing your videos or something? No, I don't think any of my stuff has ever been marked for kids. I mean, I I feel like um, even be- even before the COPA thing, I think that none of my stuff was really marked as like age friendly or anything. And I really love, I've only had like I think I've only had one video age restricted too. So I'm I I don't know. Wow, Holy shit. Oh, that's wow. very impressive. And it was just the cat in the hat video with Max Mofo, and I think it's just because he blatantly, like without anything else, he just says I'm, I'm going to put the fish in my cock hole. I think that was the thing that did it, um, <laughs> but I'm not sure. Yeah. Of course, YouTube never tells you when any of this stuff ever happens. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah, no. I wish I was Markiplier. I feel like Markiplier just like knows everybody, and uh, like people, somebody on that scale could just be like, "Hey, what the fuck's going on?" You can like, just text them. Well, there's that whole thing a couple months ago when Critical did like a stream highlight or something of him reacting to. Like this guy in a Winnie the Pooh outfit beating someone up on the street. Oh, yeah. And it got taken down mm. for, like, violating depictions of road rage. And then Markiplier stepped in, or someone like that stepped in. And yeah, I think it was Markiplier, yeah. Yeah, it was and Markiplier, And he said, like, yeah. well, you're going to have to take me down, too. And, and then they did. they did. Yeah. Like, <laughs> for 24 hours. And then they realized, oh, wait, maybe we should actually <laughs> not do this and create another unnecessary PR meltdown. Yeah. So how, how have you been handling this newfound success? Uh, is it changing anything in your life? Like, are you, are you just like thinking bigger at this point? Is it opening new doors for I'm, what you want to create? You know, I think that like the biggest thing, biggest pro is that I was able to kickstart the series. And I think that like just having a whole season of something is going to be rad. I mean, I don't think, I definitely don't expect it to be as big as like has been hotel or something. And I don't really think it like needs to. I just think that if an audience can find it and enjoy it, that's, I mean, that's like such a fucking awesome thing. Um, I think the biggest cons is just the stress, <laughs> I guess. Just, True. Just stress and uh, um, just time management shit, man. I mean, the bigger you Are get, Are you uploading the more you on a schedule right now? I just try to hit every two weeks. Like right now I have one more tune for the year that I'll do, and then I'll probably do like an end of year thank you thing. And then I'm, and then I ha- I'm taking like six weeks off. Now you say you, you nice. do have a team of uh, people that are working for you. Yeah, I I mean people consistently, but yeah, definitely contract people around the same people for these um, as I grow. Because that was the, the other thing too is like you know as you make money on stuff, um, I definitely wanted to like get stuff out faster, but then also I wanted stuff to look better and just you know just try to like slowly just morph it into something like to the best it can be for what we have right now is the idea. Right, right. I always always found it difficult hiring people on just because I've never worked with anyone before. So, it, it like, I would really like to do something like that, you know, like get uh, editors and mm. not really writers, but I, I mean, it seems like it might take away from the type of content that I would want to do, just the more, you know, chefs in the kitchen. Well, that's what um, I was going to say is like, especially with live action editing, I don't know if you guys have ever stumbled upon this problem with live action editing, but I feel like it'd be so much harder because I feel like editing a video that you've already recorded this, the, you know, all the footage for, it's like, I feel like whenever I've done that before, not that I'm a great editor, but I feel like you play that shit in your head and it has to be like a very certain way or like the timing has to be very right. certain. Oh yeah. I'm uh, definitely yeah, like yeah. that. You and just say like the lines you, a couple times. And you have to like, I feel like you have to like train somebody to like kind of know your, your tastes or your flavor, you know? So, right. cause other than that, it feels like a completely different video when someone touches it. So like yeah, with live yeah. action editing, I feel like it would be so much harder to find an editor um, versus like an animator when it's like you create an animatic and the beats are there. And sometimes you can let oh, the right. animator kind of, you know, like have fun with it and you can, you know, their style and maybe they'll do something that's funny. But other than that, it's just like a little roadmap. It's just the shit needs to get done. It just takes a while. Um, yep. So back on the old show, I remember we talked to an uh, internet historian mm. 
about sort of the process of making videos and relinquishing like your own creative control to outsource it to someone. And there's always, it's like an essential conflict with growing channels nowadays where do you want to hire an editor or do you want to just do it yourself and your videos will take longer, but you have that control over every aspect. I feel like yeah. with comedy, you kind of have to control it. Otherwise it's someone else's comedy. You know, I think, right. especially I mean, in terms maybe not of with like what you were saying with cartoons, you can control mm -hmm. that easier, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you can control it easier. I think just because the vision is so there, like I think a good example of like either pyrocynical or even like especially like I love watching Nerd City videos and it's like there may not be a lot of them, but I know that whenever you watch one of those videos, it's going to be distinctively their video, you know? Right. Versus yeah, like yeah, sometimes gotta, you have gotta... like a Markiplier thing or like one of those videos where you can tell like maybe two or three editors are doing it and it's like, uh -huh. yeah, Markiplier's there, but there's like not really, not to shit on Markiplier because that's not what I'm trying to do, but I just mean there's not like a, that essence isn't there of like the person's right. touch. Of and then a lot of these editors work on other people's channels and they end up having the same style as you because the same person edited yeah, it. Yeah, they bleed together. The whole genre bleeds together because usually there's genre editors as well of like Let's Play or whatever, you know. Yeah, I just I, I just passed off about 45 minutes of something I recorded with Emp. It was like just kind of improv uh just reacting to like fucking, I think it was like pictures of uh, Mark Zuckerberg and... <laughs> And I was like, I do not want to fucking edit this because it, it's a garbage premise. <laughs> so I, I handed it off to someone who was interested in editing some of my videos. And I was like, can you make this into something that's watchable? And uh, uh, they haven't replied yet. That's <laughs> the challenge. Yeah. They don't want to hurt well, your feelings. Well, it's the weekend, so you got to give them time. Um, I you, you kind of might have already covered this, but mm. a question I have is, What's the biggest mistake that you've made already in your career? Hmm. If there has been one. Like that, if you could just go back and change, you say, oh, fuck, like, why the hell did I do this? Um, man, that's a good one. I feel like I definitely have. I feel like, if anything, it's been probably, probably tackling too ambitious of projects early on. Um, for like ideas that I feel like could have been stronger and maybe the product wasn't nearly as good. Um, I see. And I think that like, I, I, I think that you're like, you'll always be learning what your limitations are and trying to figure out how to keep expanding that. But I think that at least the biggest, I think the biggest thing that, yeah, definitely so far has just been maybe biting off more you can chew and then like pulling too many all-nighters and shit. It's just, fuck, man, I'm getting old. I'm like, I'm like I can't keep doing these fucking all-nighters. Like, and then every time I talk to people, they're always just like, you know, oh, yeah, I have to get your sleep, all this shit. You'll go insane. You'll lose years off your life. And I think that, like, uh, just trying to maybe be a little over over ambitious or not thinking uh, correctly in terms of video ideas, I guess, would be a big thing. And um, just, trying to, yeah, just trying to figure out what you and your crew can do and uh, with the budget you have, I think, would be a big thing. Um, I mean, that's one of the major things of just working for yourself and with like a small team of people is like you're living your job 24 seven and lacking sleep and just like it, you're saying it was stressful. It's just nonstop stress having to put out content and having to have something quality that people want to watch every two weeks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's. I don't, how is this going to end for us? Are we all just going to die of heart attacks or strokes at, at 45 and exactly. have you know, a successful God, YouTube channel? Hope I'm laying in my bed and just to fucking like have a heart attack in my sleep and just die. <laughs> be just such a poetic, great, just a great ending. I'd love that. I mean, well, they say that it's very painful and, and to, you probably wake up. Oh, would you wake up? What? Oh, fuck. Okay. Well, no, never mind. I want to just die in my sleep somehow where I don't wake up. In terms of yeah, uh, how nice. long do we have to do this? I mean, look at Nostalgia Critic or AVGN. They're still doing the same characters into their mid forties. I, I wonder mm. is, is Rusty going to be doing knife game when he's fifty? Am I going to be in a monkey mask running around the retirement home? What are we going to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. When do you move on to the next thing? I mean, like a, a big thing with Joji was, or you know, Filthy Frank is mm. he knew when to quit and when to. Uh, he got be more ambitious. Time. Do you think he? Do you think he just quit, or do you think he just like 
found the new like I think that like the question isn't how long can you do something versus like how do you keep pushing yourself to find so ambitious projects and shit. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I think he just wanted to do a music project, but I'm surprised that it didn't just it, he just didn't go on YouTube. You know, like he just left YouTube to do it and mm -hmm. went to an entirely different. Tour. market. I mean, it still overlaps on YouTube, but he's not a YouTuber. Yeah, well, no, he, I mean, he released albums before on YouTube. Mm, they were just comedy yeah, albums, but he was right. working on serious uh, music Pop projects. Songs, right. I mean, per perfect timing. I mean, it was just such a like honestly fucking brilliant business move. Yeah, he like left YouTube, and then a month later, everyone got demonetized. <laughs> mm -hmm. How long does it take you? To just like uh, on the amount of uh, work that you do for these animations, right? Like, what what exactly? Like, what's your role in this? Are you just making? Uh, I forget what you called it, but like the the motion storyboard. Oh, the animatic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so usually I'll write the script and do the animatic in a day. Um, I'll voice act. God the damn. Majority of it, and then I will. No, I mean I animate a majority of it. I still like to do lip syncing. I find I actually find the lip syncing very therapeutic, which I know a lot of people fucking hate it because it's tedious. But <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. But I really enjoy making like the mouth packs. I just really like making very like elaborate, weird mouth packs, and I, like I don't know why I've like had this like twisted fucking like reality of like ha like having like a fun time drawing like teeth and gum <laughs> and stuff. So I'm always like, oh, it's nice. Uh, but I uh, were you a fan of uh, um, Ren and Stimpy, like the the very detailed, the, the yeah, shots. absolutely. The definitely the gross out cards of even like SpongeBob yeah. and stuff, and like uh, even just Todd McFarlane's work on like old Spider Man or like uh, Spawn and R. Crumb type stuff of just like really gritty, kind of gross. Uh, yeah, I'm a shit. big fan of Spawn, the, the animation series too. When you were talking about saving time, yeah, and obviously money, mm. like they cut a lot of frames in those HBO animations. Um, I guess that's what all animation kind of was in the 90s like not all animation but a lot of those action animations were uh, uh, like lacking in frames I guess low frame rate yeah I think that definitely taking a page out of like anime like even older anime or even modern anime is very keen on stills mm -hmm. uh, that are just kind of like tween across the frame or very limited things for things uh, like for simple actions because I really don't think the human eye can really pick it up until like in, unless you like break it down where you're like oh fuck there's really not much there while you're watching the story go on your mind really isn't picking up like fuck this motion is choppy or it's like mm -hmm. not it doesn't look realistic and they put all this detail so, into it trying hard yeah. and you don't, you don't even see it yeah right. that's that, that's a big thing yeah do you do you ever feel like you you work uh, too hard on something that no one's gonna fucking care about or notice <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I would think every, I would think every week, yeah, or every yeah, time I make one, yeah. yeah, every time I'm like, I think that's maybe just my own self doubt and stuff, but um, I think well, that's also like a completion yeah. thing too. Like, you know, if you're if you're obsessing over something, I, for me, I, mm. I'm just moved into the realm of making comic books, and I, I feel like every background uh, has to have all the detail, or else the image is incomplete. Right. When in reality, you know, people are just skimming over that and reading the words yeah, and just getting an idea the, of what the motion or the scene is. Wrecking with the Crazies, man. It was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Oh, shit, man. What do you like? Yeah, it? It was, it was Rusty's really biggest fan? I've never read anything he's done. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, you know, I, I, I have a, I, I enjoy, I, I have a odd, uh, I just fucking love YouTube and shit. And when I yeah. see people doing stuff, I like to keep up with everything because I think that there are actually so many fucking creators on this platform that are. Just like just genuine, you know what I mean. There's yeah, a lot of people I, that are right. for the money like and stuff, but there's so many people that are doing <laughs> great things where I feel like you can really learn a lot, even just from watching people do stuff. Yeah, um, steal their jokes. And then, yeah, exactly. <laughs> steal jokes <laughs> or do whatever. But I think that just uh, yeah, even just the way people do things or handle things or whatever, I think it's all just very informative and helpful. It's just cool too. It's cool. Did, yeah, did you know, start off works. on Newgrounds or somewhere else? Like, where did you start your, uh, I guess, uh, your internet? career or is this the absolute beginning i mean i would say that this is the beginning i mean i have videos from like three years ago but it's like i may have posted one or two videos a year i didn't have internet during the whole like peak of new ground you know hype with ego raptor and all those other guys you didn't uh, have internet no yeah I, I how did you survive 
<laughs> I wait. What, what year is this? This is like 2005 or something. This is like 2000. I probably didn't. I didn't have internet until I went to college, so 2012. Wow! Holy shit! Yeah. yeah. Um, so I. <laughs> what did you do professionally before you did animations for YouTube? I did a lot of construction and like odd jobs. I moved around a lot and tried to find yeah. freelance work or contract work for animation. So I hopped around a lot. I moved all over. Um, like when I graduated college, I moved to LA. Did the whole deal went broke <laughs> i had to move back home and i worked like a hallmark factory like the hallmark gift cards or uh holiday cards and i worked there and i got another opportunity i went back to la fucked up again i had to move to utah did like construction work and call center work and moved to new york for a contract thing and then moved to portland so just mostly just a lot of you're absolutely work. living the the dream though of yeah going right. from construction Rags to like to this dream project you know? Yeah, it's been, hands a, are real soft it's now. been a very Disney-esque, like, remember the Titans kind of, uh, <laughs> like, I don't know, like, upcoming or something. I really want to, whenever the movie happens for uh, Disney, I, I want, like, a, a very cute man to play <laughs> me for this uprise, <laughs> definitely. Just, um, yeah. Shit, shit, man. So, I mean, so, yeah, you're, this is all still relatively new. You said you mm. made your channel, or it started blowing up a, a year ago. I guess mm. I'm... I'm very impressed by the amount of growth that you've had in a very small amount of time, relatively. Yeah. You know, it's not like, I mean, I guess you've, you know, you've been working on this for a while and really working towards it. But, oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I, 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 I agree, though. I mean, like, I think, like, I didn't really start taking it too seriously until I was on Instagram. I think I hit, like, 5,000 followers on Instagram, and I, like, started making videos a bunch that were, like, 60 seconds long because that's the cap of, like, the Instagram video. Right. And I was like, oh, there's no really point of uploading to YouTube, blah, blah. But I was like, oh, fuck it. I'm going to do it anyways. And then luckily after a couple of them, the Pinocchio one just kind of hit. Um, and then, yeah, just. Oh, yeah. Like, so, uh, I mean, but you had to have kind of known that like what your, your, your animations were going to hit because it was almost at least at one point was a proven um, tactic, like it, creepy animations. You know, I mean, everyone knows salad fingers and. You were talking about Harry Partridge and whatnot. Oh, yeah, they're just self-doubting. Yeah, I just don't think that. It, it just it's uh, it's hard to know what is in the realm. Like, I mean, in terms of Salad Fingers, that thing's old, super old, and it hit at a time. And like, I think that it it affected so many people. But I feel like that was from a different time as well. So then you kind of think, you know, I'm not really thinking like, oh, if Salad Fingers could do it, I can, or even like Harry Partridge and stuff. It feels like, um. I mean, I, maybe it is self doubt or something, but it, I, I, I don't, I definitely don't think I ever went into it just being like, oh, like this is going to be good. Like people will like this. I think it was also just, yeah, I think it was just a bunch of shit of just being like, like, oh yeah, I think that that's like funny, or I think that's like weird or creepy or like, you know, all that kind of shit. Just like kind of vibing with whatever I'm watching, like at the time, which was like Hereditary, was like I, lo I loved. I fucking love that movie. Yeah, I love when uh, that girl gets Ari her head lopped off. Just that whole the amount of fear that you get from being uh, a high teenager at a party <laughs> while your sister is having uh, an allergic reaction is choking to death. Like that that's real fear to me. Uh is not like you know the boogeyman under the bed or your mom crawling across the ceiling, but just the panic of being fucking high while someone who you're in charge of is dying. <laughs> Yeah, Do you exactly. have a story to tell, Rusty? <laughs> yeah. No, I have nothing to say about it. <laughs> well, me, Kenya, I find it really interesting how your stuff has, it's not only defied the idea, the prevailing idea on YouTube that animation can't get views anymore. It's defied the idea that edgy, disturbing content can't get views. So you've taken like two tropes that have seemingly been set in stone on YouTube and completely defied them. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I'm very I, I feel very lucky. <laughs> I do I I feel very lucky for sure, um, because there's so many people who do make you know fucking weird content and just can't get the traction and stuff. And who would be Who would be someone? Do you have anyone in mind that you see them like really busting their ass and putting out good shit, but it just isn't going anywhere? Hmm. For maybe the algorithm doesn't you know, favorite or whatever. You know, I'd have to, th I'd have to think on it more. I, I think that there's definitely other YouTube animation, YouTube channels that I try to shout out as much as I can that I really enjoy. Um, I guess in terms of, are you a fan of, of uh, James Lee animation? Yeah, of course. Oh yeah. I mean, how can you, um, 
That dude is like a fucking Swiss Army knife of like, I feel like he can do anything. <laughs> like the, I, He's incredible. I, I watch those videos and I have no idea. Because I, I, I don't really know a lot about animation, but I mean, I can guess and just like practical effects. I'm trying to figure out how the fuck did he make these scenes? Like how much of his animation, how, mo- how much of it is movie magic? Yeah, I don't know how much... Uh so uh, we were t- I was, we were talking with him about it, um, me and the Flash gets guys, and they uh, because they're good friends with him. And I don't know how much he wants to keep a secret and stuff, but it's very odd. Like whenever he told me know, how I, he does it, I'm like, I was like, what? Like, how, like I keep uh, wanting to ask him, like, hey, how like how do you make your teeth white? <laughs> you know, how, <laughs> like because the, the teeth, it's like Sin City. You know, where they're yeah, it's I'm very like, Are you the, animating the, that frame by frame or what? Yeah, I you know if you, I'm, I'm sure if you reached out to him, he would ask. He's a very nice Australian man. No, no, I I, I talked to him, but oh, I, cool. what I'm saying is I'm I'm still afraid oh, to you ask should. him. Yeah, yeah, you should because <laughs> I I don't want to be like, hey man, uh, I have a thousand questions about everything you do <laughs> when it comes to editing. Yeah, as I do with you as well. I mean, just like the whole process of animation is so fascinating to me. Uh. And overbearing, personally, like I would never want to get into animation. It is very tedious. I, I, I think that yeah. criminally ill people are more <laughs> like wanting to do animation. And I, I, I don't know why as a child I was like, that's what I want to do. Probably because you just don't know how much work it is and shit. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's just been very fulfilling. Uh, luckily enough, I feel like I know a lot of people who struggle to find being like, I just don't know what I want to do. And luckily... And right, animations right. for me, just like they definitely scratch that itch of like, whenever you're done with an animation, you're like, "Fuck, I feel so good." Type deal. It it, it does feel awesome. So, you reuse. It, your, it also uh, has like an. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say you reuse your uh, animations, right? Like, I feel like that. Like, I've done animation in the past, like how like, Disney does. Well, or like if I if I draw an office, I'm I'm gonna use it again if I need an office, you know. So it's like you kind of get it out of the way. You know, and, like, when the you draw uh, characters and you have them done. Yeah, like reusable assets and stuff. Yeah. I think that for the to original series I'm doing, we're definitely trying to do that. But in terms of parody, it's kind of hard just because oh, they're yeah, all different. Wanna, I think I, th- I yeah, think it's just uh, I think that it's just you're, we're we're in just such a groove right now where it's just such second nature. Like whenever I'm done with that, yeah. I immediately know what I need to do. It's like fucking taking limitless pills or some shit. You're just like I know, like I can yeah, I, I can see the numbers in the <laughs> on the wall, and you like can just go. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, what were you saying? I don't remember. What I was doing. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, let's so, uh, look at the news. Oh, well, we do. Did you guys know that uh, Drake Bell changed his name to what is this? Drake Campana, and moved to Mexico and started speaking Spanish, and now he's a Spanish pop star. Is this an actual news story? Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, so uh, Meat Canyon, we we cover the news quite frequently on this show. Um, and so uh, now you'll, you'll have to to comment on Drake Bell. <laughs> you like walking them through how to how to have an opinion <laughs> on news. <laughs> Drake Campana. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, so I'm Googling I, it I got right a bunch now. of yeah. ridiculous news articles and uh, and now uh, we can talk about them. But yeah, Wait, you, so, you know so who Drake, Drake Bell changed is, right? his name to? Drake Campania, which I, I'm, I'm assuming it's. Campania, but it's he should have changed it, is, it to it, Taco Bell instead of Drake Bell. Oh yeah, yeah. There you go. But I guess Campania Bell. means Bell in Spanish, and now he's <laughs> and now and now he's a, a very popular Spanish pop singer. Yeah, yeah. he's gonna come out with Despacito too. Uh, but it says the reason, or he did it after fans are alleging that he basically ran away from his life in the United States following the emotional and physical abuse allegations by former girlfriend Jimmy Ono. She mm. posted about her experience with Bell on TikTok. So. Oh, Rusty! Didn't your sister See, date Drake Bell or something? What? No, no, my sister w- was best friends with someone who dated Drake Bell. <laughs> That's like irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my sister knows someone who knows someone yeah. who is Drake Bell. Um, well, I mean, good for him. I mean, it's all about it's I guess so weird, reinventing though. yourself, like a grasp for wait, Drake, wait, Drake Bell. Which one is he? Is he was he the fat one or the no? Guy? He, he was the, the skinny one. The skinny one. I mean, the yeah, yeah but then Josh ended, ended up okay. getting hotter than him, and he yeah. kind of felt yeah. cut, so he <laughs> ran away to Mexico. <laughs> was Drake when Bell? The, was he even uh, Mexican? No, no, he looks like a white dude. So, so odd. How is he not? How is that okay? How is yeah? How, <laughs> how is he still? I feel, I, I feel like uh, he grew, he grew a mustache. Oh, oh, didn't, I think just, oh, didn't Justin is. Bieber do oh, that? He's wearing a sombrero now. That's what it is. 
there Justin Bieber is. did like Despacito or something, and now he's N- very no. popular in Latin America. Well, hey, yeah, but also what what he did is he did Despacito, and then on a live show, he didn't know how to speak Spanish, so he was going <laughs> Despacito, something, 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 oh, bean really? burrito, what? something, <laughs> something, <laughs> and he got briefly canceled for. Uh, oh, I guess being racist. so so he learned Spanish. Wait, are you talking about Drake Bell? No, no, oh, okay. um, uh, JB, Justin Bieber, yeah. Oh man, I can't imagine people hating Justin Bieber. No, yeah, never. Have, you ever do it before? have you had any criticism for any of your animations? Like, are you getting canceled at all? Or I mean, it, it, oh, your yeah. shit's not like yeah. I, I, okay, yeah, right. I get a, I get a lot. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot. I mean, I'm not trying to make it seem well, like you're reading the, the hate, but like, I get a lot of messages and shit. I know the make the makeup video. I got a lot of shit off of that because I think another, <laughs> I think another person. Uh, or I did a. It was like an animation about like the drama going around like Shane Dawson and Jeffrey Star a couple months back. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. All right. I remember in my head I'm seeing a very decrepit uh, crypt keeper Jeffrey Star. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, yes, I, I think I did see that. And I, I think got that, a, true. Yeah, you you really attacked the wrong community there. <laughs> I mean, they're that's them and K-pop stands are. Probably the most powerful people in the world at the <laughs> moment. True. I'm just tired of seeing it. It's it's always like I feel like every year around this time, around that time period, it's just there's like always like some kind of fucking drama going on, and it just like floods your feed. And like even if you do like the whole like non interest thing, it will always pop back up. It will find its way back onto your timeline. Now are they just, <laughs> just fucking geniuses? One. Oh yeah, like like Shane Dawson. Oh, he's canceled again. Yeah, he'll be back. But everyone's still just talking about Shane Dawson. As long as you're talking about him, you don't become yeah. irrelevant. Yeah, I I, th- I wonder if this is the longest he's gone without making a video or something. Because I think even beforehand when he got canceled, it was like a little bit, and then he kind of came back. But now I, it almost feels like it's uh, he's done, but I feel like he will emerge from the shadows once again. I remember when he decided to leave YouTube to go on to bigger things and become a director. Yes. Um, and and I found it very disheartening because also, also uh, uh, Ray William Johnson did this. They were going to leave YouTube to move on to bigger film projects. Mm. And then they just come back to YouTube. And I'm wondering, is like... Does YouTube just inflate your ability to create good stuff? I mean, it's like the bar just lowered because it's YouTube, and then you go out into that real world, like having to produce something or be a well, director pe- for a Netflix show. People get a show. big head on YouTube. Yeah, it's people just because you get views. Well, you look at something like Fred, where these videos were very gimmicky, <laughs> and they came out at a time when like random internet humor was very popular. But unfortunately, the, a lot of these guys enter mainstream entertainment and they simply do not have the talent to stand on their own well, except for fred though because those movies i mean those are masterpieces mm. well john cena gave the best performance in any of the fred <laughs> yeah, he movies. was robbed of the oscar nod that year i was really pissed off about that i guess what we're trying to say here is uh i know you have all this you know this newfound success but uh don't think that your fucking shit don't stink you know <laughs> like you'll fail just like the rest of us <laughs> yeah, fucker. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, 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 um, I, I feel like people also, I guess, to add on to all that was, uh, I guess, you know, Shane Dawson and all those kind of people, they go out and realize that there's an actual, not to say they're not talented, but like there's an actual like art to directing and there's like people that it's a craft <laughs> and like right. doing like eating videos or whatever on your channel isn't the same as like, directing other people and like having a clear vision for scenes and cinematography like all that kind of shit so it's like yeah you, i feel like it'll humble you pretty quick if you're not <laughs> if you're not like uh experienced in any regards besides just having internet fame i i've, I've thought about that as well like for, when i was growing up i wanted to make i wanted to like be a director and as i'm getting older i'm like holy shit that is i don't think i could actually make a good movie if i wanted it would just be some weird like esoteric, uh, independent, like Jim Jarmusch type of thing. Not that those aren't good, but mm. um, how much work actually goes into directing? Like you, you're saying, have that vision. Uh, for the longest time, I didn't even know what a fucking director did because I was like, oh, everyone else does it. But they have to know every aspect and know who uh, to You're, pick you're like the brains thing. of the entire operation. Yeah. You have to control pretty much everything except for the funding 
Yeah, like which no the producer does. Nobody knows what the movie looks like besides you until it's done. It's like kind of the big thing. It's like how I always have been described it. No one knows what it looks like until it's done. Right, right. And also you can completely ruin someone's – like you can make an actor look bad. <laughs> yeah. Or really good, depending on how good you are. Yeah, it's like when Rusty edits this podcast. If I ever sound like an idiot, it's because he, he was editing stuff on it. Because, I mean, clearly I wouldn't say anything that doesn't make any sense. Sure. <laughs> I like to lower uh, heavy heavy parts of the audio spectrum to make monkey sound really tinny or <laughs> – like muffled. Wait, wait, do like I sound like shit on Discord tonight? Low, low T. No, it sounds great. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, he, he edits my T to be low. <laughs> <laughs> low testosterone every podcast. Um, I, I asked Twitter to give us some questions to ask you, and a lot of them are very bad questions, of course. Oh, good. But, uh, yeah. Um, oh, okay. Well, this is going to be kind of a forwarded question uh who's your favorite guest that you've had on one of your animations probably um hmm that is a good one i really i ask people to be voices in when i really enjoy their stuff but i really like w working with mark m from sick animation um he i i just think he's fucking awesome and he just uh I just really love Sick Animation. That channel is just fucking awesome. And I just... Uh, I'm yeah. not even familiar with them. That's the guy who made uh, oh. Come On Scoob, right? Yeah, Come On Come Scoob on, and Scoob. Tommy the Gorilla. Just a lot of like yeah, really weird got, shit. It's like... I, it's kind of like I, the gross uh, animation style sort of thing, right? I would gross, say it's more it's just like, like simple and crude. It's just yeah, very... Yeah, 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 it's yeah, very sure. out of not nowhere. Gross, it doesn't feel like 2008, like Dane Cook, like, you know, random XD shit. Yeah. It just feels like he puts you in a very weird scenario yeah and just, yeah. just kind of go on for a ride it. yeah yeah it's it, and it's just very fun and he's yeah. he's just he's a great guy i really yeah, really enjoyed ones. working with him um all right let's see here let me try to get some of these out because i think we've done almost an hour so far this only goes on for about an hour then we have like an after show i guess i should have told you about that it goes on for another 30 minutes yeah can i finally talk about politics on the after show at least no 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 because <laughs> hey, hey i was gonna bring this up earlier but there's a comment on the last episode saying if reactor does not bring up politics this whole episode he's gonna give us a hundred dollars on patreon and i really there don't want to lose that so well, reactor just shut the fuck it. up all right so did he fuck it up already no no because no, no. i'm gonna cut this part out of the audio and they'll never no, know he didn't talk about politics he talked about talking about politics i think that's yeah, the okay, it's well, talking about politics right, though, right, back talking. to the guest our guest of honor <laughs> <laughs> no no Okay, uh, Mikan, this is actually a, a really good question. These are some of the quality questions coming in. Mm. Um, I guess, uh, how did you come up with your name? <laughs> how did I come up with my name? Yeah. I think I was drunk at my girlfriend at the time, girlfriend's house. <laughs> so you uh, got stuck with it? Yeah, or I was just yeah, like, well, oh, that's fun. That's what I, I did. It's a name generator. And I was like, oh, whatever. I just stuck oh. with it. Yeah, I picked no, the stupidest uh, word on purpose, and now I kind of, yeah, whatever. But <laughs> it wasn't yeah, the yeah, greatest I mean, idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I was asking that question about like what's the biggest mistake that you could change if you can go back, yeah. uh, I, I know for me and I think Reactor would agree it was it was just the name that we chose for <laughs> like for me Rusty Cage is not a good name because everyone just goes oh like the song and I'm constantly competing against Google's oh, yeah. you know Sound search garden. engine against right. fucking very <laughs> right. popular songs and now I'm competing against nuclear reactors, no. <laughs> which. It, Actually, tend to do considerably better than you. In <laughs> yeah, I know. I they know. draw a lot of traffic. <laughs> oh, people, people really love the subject. Yeah. <laughs> because after Sharon Noble, um, are we allowed to talk about the the show that you're that you crowdfunded on Kickstarter? Yeah, yeah, we can. Uh, okay, so you had me do some uh, uh, some voices or a, a voice of one of the characters. Yes, and I was panicking because I'm like, "Fuck, man! I don't know how to record voiceover <laughs> stuff." Yeah, for someone, you know, I, mm. I, so I just recorded like what I thought was like four different voices, mm. and then as I'm listening back on my laptop, I'm like, "Holy, holy shit! They all sound the same." <laughs> yeah, they were all uh, pretty identical. Yeah, but they probably don't. <laughs> really? <laughs> God damn it! And I don't know. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was just at the time I was like listening to myself talk. I could hear myself in my head. Maybe you're tone deaf. Um, what was that? Maybe you're tone oh, deaf. Well, no, I'm not no, tone deaf. I'm kidding, I know. I'm an artist. <laughs> um, how do you, when you're getting people to do voiceovers, like, 
how much of it is based on their actual technique with microphone placement, with their room treatment versus just how strange they can make their voice sound? Um, I think that a lot of the time it's basically just not even how weird can they make their voice. It's just sometimes it's just if you if you feel like you enjoy somebody's voice, usually you can get a performance out of them in some way. Um, True. I think that a good example, and a lot of people are like that too. I feel like a lot of people and like you know the audio treatment stuff. Thankfully, I have like an audio guy now who can just like he just knows how to like balance that shit out. But um, I get a lot of times of like a good example is Max. I always tell a story. I think he hates it, but Max Mofo. He did a cat in the hat and uh, he sent me like an hour worth of takes for like a two page script or something. Oh, okay. All right. This is, this is another, yeah. The other question I was going to ask, yeah. cause I believe I sent you a shitload of takes. Yeah. So yeah. just cause I didn't know what the fuck, like for me reading the script, I didn't know what the, the mood was. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, I'll just send you everything. I really and tried just to gonna hate me. <laughs> I really don't, I, I'm, I'm really not a big stickler about stuff. I know people like I, I have, uh, I know flash gets whenever you do a voice for flash gets or something, they will be on the call with you and it'll be, they need to have it just perfect. I like having the flaws in there. I like having people kind of not know what's going on. Cause at least to a sense of like, there, there should be like a general idea of what's happening. But sometimes through that confusion, you get a better performance or like maybe it fits better than you would have expected it versus being like, oh, he's a stern old guy. And it's like, well, I didn't right. know. So now he sounds like a weird like nasal. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you can like yeah. you can people's just kind of like gut instincts are sometimes a better performance than trying to sit there and think about like, oh, well, he sounds like this in my head because I think that sometimes you can limit yourself. To well, it's also that's the whole magic of outsourcing stuff or, or even writing. Like when you're writing videos, do you write with anyone or is it all just you? It's usually just me. I, I sometimes try to have buddies come on and like it, I wouldn't really even say that. They, I mean, like it's, it's mostly just being like, oh, is this funny? And then being like, OK, well, like, why yeah. is that funny? And like breaking stuff down. But like I usually write the script by myself. Yeah. True. Yeah. No, I, I like uh, one thing my dream would be to have an office room with a big table and just all of the, the funniest people that I know come in or the most creative and I mm. can just pitch ideas at them. And then, so none of us, they tell me, well, <laughs> you, you would be there monkey, but I mean, <laughs> what is this like special ed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, ooh, that's a great idea. I'll write that one down. <laughs> yeah. I think that everybody wants like a Matt Stone and Trey Parker kind of relationship of being like you, you have somebody that you equally respect that's helping you just make just fun shit. Pretty sure you know, they hate each other. <laughs> you think so? Uh, yeah, I think like at first they were best friends, but now they hate each other. That's what I heard. Oh, I've wow. heard that, but oh, I always hear that sad. about every duo. Yeah. It's always like Penn and Teller hate each other. I'm uh, like, yeah, do they maybe. really hate each other? I would. Or also they don't hang out. It's like you treat like a, a relationship like that as professional and professional only. Like nah, maybe they're know. not going that's... over to each other's houses. Yeah. Right. But I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, being around somebody for that long would probably get tiring. Yeah. No, I rewatch like, a lot of uh Kenny versus Spinny and like follow up with like what they do not to. I don't know those guys fucking hate each other, but to be fair, I guess they were blatantly just dickheads to each other the whole time. But that's <laughs> true. Yeah, I don't know. I well, hope um, I guess we've done just about an hour. Do you does anyone have any other questions for Meat Canyon on this main show? Uh, no, I think that was a pretty good show. Yeah, yeah. I hope I was. I hope I was okay. <laughs> I hope it was you're, good. You're all right. All right. No, no, no. <laughs> you got some. Of, you got some of the answers wrong, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah, better luck next well, time. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> um, is your so your Kickstarter is no longer funding? Are you doing anything, or what are you promoting right now? I'm nothing really, man. Just my channel. Okay. If you, if you want to check out my stuff, feel free to. If not. I feel you. Right on. <laughs> Carry yeah, so on. Donate uh, to Meat Canyon instead of the show because his well, stuff is actually has artistic merit. And what, what did you say? Your, stupid your website, podcast. Your website is meatspin.com? It is. It's, meat, <laughs> okay. it's meatspin.com and try to stay there for at least 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, I go champion. for a thousand spins at least. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, you have to. It's good music on that page. Oh, yeah. 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 I was actually more of a fan of uh, the the Lemon Party song is always stuck in my head. I think it's Jimmy Soul. 
Uh, if you want to be happy for the rest of your life, <laughs> don't make a pretty woman your wife. Um, it, this song is constantly stuck in my head because it's a very catchy song. And but you spent so much time on the website, yeah. I assume. No, yeah. no. It, it, it was a popular song before the website. Uh, all I'm saying is that now I can't even... Yeah, I can't even <laughs> think of the song without thinking of a bunch of. If old you guys hear the song, you start yeah. jerking off. <laughs> I think yeah. that's why they did it. You, you take get a hard catchy when you tune, hear the song now. Yeah. Put some graphic imagery with it, and then it's yeah. like stuck in their head. Mm. <laughs> well, I think that's a good, good uh, uh, closing point for the show. Yeah, we, we, we gave the fans the some hour? websites to go check out, and now they can <laughs> yeah. go check out the uh, the bonus episode. You should have thrown in your Patreon and in, in those websites as well. There's like a nice little collection of websites. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, uh, Reactor, do we have any questions from Patreon? Uh, Let me guess. You didn't check. Mm, well, if, if we no, do, uh, we can just I, do I, them in the bonus I section. did check. Uh, How are you so, going to answer Patreon questions in the bonus thing that only Patreon? They're the only ones to. who would give a shit. Yeah. yeah, I suppose. Well. Uh, so we don't have any messages, but we have. It's a good indicator that we no have one notifications. <laughs> how Daddy do I? Justin show. Kim asked, "How do I delete a message?" <laughs> good good oh, question. Okay. He, he also asked, "How do I make it so he can't see the message?" Mm. Okay. Also, mm. fuck. Baron Brunk, that guy, annoying as fuck. What? Baron Von Brunk or Baron Trump? Yeah, Justin yeah. Justin Kidd's talking shit, or Justin Kim is talking shit about Baron. Oh, we have like I'm not a, sure if they had some sort of fight Civil in the Baron has been something. such a longtime supporter of all of our channels. Yeah. Isn't Baron like he's, six he's in the seven? He's in the golden executive club. <laughs> yeah, You're going to have to donate a lot more. Baron's for us a big guy. The, I met him in New York a few times. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like a big and then, uh, gangly spider. Not, yeah. not a Barry, kiss. you can just go beat the shit out of Justin Kim. This is I'm old. Tired of hearing about it. This is old, but Nuttica said, "Wow, I really just paid five dollars to hear Rusty get bullied for trying to better his life. Money well spent." <laughs> <laughs> all right, good. <laughs> I'm glad that's working out. Uh, all right, all right. Well, uh, uh, thank you, oh, patrons. Hey, well, one, for one, wait, 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 hey, hey, one more. I found one from Baron. Oh yeah, maybe they were like, arg- I don't know. But Baron said, "What evidence is there, if any, that Hank Hill sold his soul to the devil?" I'm not sure mm. what he's talking about. Oh, that's a good question for Meat Canyon. Mm. Oh, yeah? Is there any evidence that Hank Hill sold his soul to the devil? No. I know he's depicted that in King of the Hill, there's a lot of scenes, though, of, of Hank fantasizing or like in his nightmares, he's in hell. I, I want to say there's at least six different times. Yeah, it sounds familiar. Hank's like, oh, God, you know, oh, Bobby. <laughs> God damn it. Are we going to no, no, whatever. So Are we going to get a King of the Hill Meat Canyon cartoon soon? I already have oh, one, man. Yeah. Oh shit, what? me and Rusty are friends with the guy who yeah. voices Dale Gribble. We could get the actual Dale in your cartoon. Oh, that'd be cool. Mike Judge <laughs> followed me on Twitter and messaged nice. me oh, and wow. I cried. <laughs> Why are you on this podcast? <laughs> you are, you're you're big time. No. I, Hollywood I Meat Canyon. Yeah. No. Hollywood. Uh, like, <laughs> Hanging out with a bunch of on the, the the podcast that no one's gonna listen to. No, I mean I I, I, I thoroughly I thoroughly enjoy the show. I enjoy your guys' content. I need to branch out more. Like I said, the whole monkey thing I hadn't really heard of until I feel like your channel was already gone. And that's that's, what, that's where you got a big break. We talking, but. <laughs> yeah, just don't go the route of monkey, and um, you know, keep up the great work. You're definitely on a fast trajectory yeah. upward, and don't forget to branch out. YouTube's not uh, the universe, you know. You gotta make sure <laughs> yeah. your, your your business is. Oh yeah, yeah. Are you, are you on Instagram? Secure too, other right? places. Yeah, I think that like uh, there's been other things though of like just trying to branch out of even just like online stuff and maybe moving towards like I have, I have a couple things going on, but as of right now, the main focus is definitely like YouTube and social media stuff. But I there's definitely other stuff in the books, but the full attention is definitely on. Uh, like Monster Lab and making sure that like that show is awesome and making sure people feel happy that they gave me money to make it <laughs> type deal. I guess that, is the big that's thing. That's exciting. What yeah. you should do is do another crowdfunding for that and leave it the longest possible so people can just continuously fund it. Or yeah, I guess that's what you, you do for a, your comic. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I try to get every drop out of these these fucking suckers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, do you have a Patreon? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yep. Okay, that's uh, we'll, we'll put all that in the description. Oh, cool. Thank you. 
All right. Well, I guess if you want to hear the rest of the show and all the questions that we still have for Meat Canyon, which there are quite a bit, then please consider contributing to our Patreon. Uh, what what is that? No, Patreon.com. Don't, don't do it like that. What? Don't do it like it, it's Patreon.com slash uh, trash rats. But you have to be like, uh, all right, no one else is allowed to listen to the rest of the show unless they pay us money. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, so, Meat Canyon, I'm about to ask you a question that is going to be very difficult to answer. Mm. But, oh, unfortunately, is this the after show? For the after oh, okay. show. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say. Don't, Th- don't this is how that. we're going to trick them to pay? Yeah. yeah how, much is, how, much is, how much is it to listen? Scam. Uh, that's a good uh, question. I'm not the, really sure. For what? The after show? <laughs> how, much, how much are your prices? Yeah, I uh, know your prices before you. I think, I think it's like 10 cents per word. No, it's uh, no, five no, bucks. No, five to, bucks, and you can even be a patron. Yeah, it's like yeah. five bucks. I think maybe even one buck you can join. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. It's a fuck. No, no, I mean, yeah, five dollar minimum. One dollar isn't enough. You should tell them one dollar, then just raise it to ten. But they're like, "Fuck! I already came to the page. I might as well just do it." Yeah. Yeah. These these, these people are stupid. They'll they'll give you money for anything. <laughs> we'll see you there, folks. <laughs> Later. <laughs>